Many of my students and clinical supervisees don't really know where to begin for studying for the social work licensing exams. In my experience, one of the most common question types presents you with a scenario, and then it asks you, what's the best course of action? What should you do first? Or what would the social worker do next? And of course, having an understanding of the code of ethics and issues of diversity and human behavior theories, evidence-based practice, and so forth will help. But in my opinion, one of the most important things to keep in mind are the steps of the helping process, the phases, or what I call the order of operations. So this video is going to take you through a memory trick that I came up with, actually with the help of someone who bought my study guide and provided some feedback um, about what you should do first. Now you might be wondering why this slide has a picture of apple pie. It's not because the test is easy as pie, I wish, but I hope this video will help reveal why we have apple pie, and you'll find out in just a moment. Does anyone remember PEMDAS from back in the day in school? Or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. It's a mnemonic device to help you remember the order of operations in a math equation. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Well, lucky for you, there is no math on the ASWB exams, so you can thank your lucky stars for that. But we are going to use a similar technique to help remember some guiding principles on what often happens in what order. But first, I need to emphasize that this video is not officially um, endorsed or sponsored through ASWB. This is just based on my own experience having done some tutoring and reviewing a lot of practice materials and working with folks who've recently taken the exam. There also are several models, several tips and tricks for remembering the same thing. So if you, you know, go on YouTube or look at other prep sources, you're going to probably find um, some other ones. And they all have a lot of similarities, and I encourage you to explore several, find the commonalities, and figure out what sticks best in your mind. And re remember, every question stands alone. This is meant to be a helpful rule of thumb, but I encourage you to pay attention to the particular nuances and details in each question. As the ASWB exam book says, passing this multiple choice exam relies on demonstrating knowledge and competence, not memorizing tricks or patterns. So that being said, let's take a look at a framework that you might find to be a helpful starting point. When you take your exam, remember that you should eat apple pie in every town. These are the phases of the helping process. Engage, assess, plan, intervene, evaluate, and terminate. Let's explore each of these in a little bit more detail. First, engagement. You'll probably have multiple questions where the right answer includes some of these words. Acknowledging feelings, validating, empathizing, exploring what the client said, building rapport, exploring what they meant by something. The biggest mistake that I see is people jumping the gun, bypassing this engagement stuff, and proceeding directly to an intervention, which is maybe a good or appropriate answer, but it's not the first thing that you would do. So these are some of the aliases of engagement, and here's what you really need to remember for engagement, so listen carefully here. The social worker should be getting a feel for the reason that the client is seeking services, setting expectations for the helping relationship, like roles, and getting basic information from the client, and remembering that client participation is key. This should be a collaborative process, and we want to know what their perspective is. So in summary, this step involves establishing rapport and building a trusting relationship with the client. Test takers should understand the importance of active listening, empathy, and creating a safe space for clients to express themselves. Now you're embarking on further exploration through a more formal assessment. Whereas an engagement might be a question like, what brings you in today? An assessment question might be more like, how many times in the past two weeks have you experienced the following symptoms? 
Um, so just keep in mind these key points as they relate to um, assessments in the order of operations. There is a whole section on the exam for assessment, and that's not what I'm talking about here. That's more about biopsychosocial and collateral information and assessment tools and so forth. This is just in terms of what you do in order. So getting a more detailed and comprehensive um, background about the client, diagnosing, especially on the clinical exam, and getting collateral as well, you know, maybe asking like a parent or something if that's appropriate based on the question stem. So the main takeaway here is that assessment involves formally gathering information about the client's presenting issues, strengths, don't forget strengths, challenges, and environmental factors. So you should be familiar with those various tools and techniques, standardized screening tools, Ecomap, Genogram, all that stuff. But for now, just realize assessment is the second step and it usually involves a more formal process. Then we got to make a plan so we know where we're going. This should be collaborative. So planning often looks like defining the problem, examining the causes of that presenting problem, brainstorming solutions, considering factors that would promote or inhibit success, prioritizing which solutions you'll start with first or what you'll work on first, setting those SMART goals, determining behaviors, steps, activities that can move you towards that goal achievement, and then documenting all of this in, as part of a treatment plan. So overall planning involves collaboratively setting goals and developing a treatment plan based on those assessment findings, that's why that happens first, and of course the client's needs and preferences and unique circumstances. You should understand how to develop realistic and measurable goals, select appropriate interventions based on those findings from the assessment, and consider those cultural and contextual factors in your treatment planning. Then you're finally going to be able to do the dang thing. So there are lots of great things social workers can do to intervene, but they're often not the first thing that we do, depending again on what the prompt, you know, the question stem has already delineated for us. I made this graphic to show that the exam loves EBP, and what does EBP stand for? Evidence-based practice. So intervention involves implementing evidence-based techniques and strategies to address the client's goals and objectives. Test takers should be knowledgeable about a range of intervention modalities like cognitive behavioral therapy, psychodynamics, family therapy, crisis intervention, and so forth. Those are particularly for the clinical exam, but of course, you know, look at the KSA, the content outlines for your exam level to see what types of things are in that intervention section um, and know how to tailor those interventions to meet the unique needs of each client. In addition to this, you know, this might be psychoeducation, resource, brokering, casework, and so forth. We also want to evaluate. Evaluation involves assessing the effectiveness of the intervention and treatment plan and achieving those client goals. You should definitely be familiar with how to monitor progress. So that might involve subjective reports from the client, client self-monitoring, or objective measures on tools, mood scales, like, you know, that type of thing. And adjust your interventions as needed so that we're doing practice-based evidence and using those outcome measures to evaluate the client's progress toward those goals and those treatment plans that we set. On the exam, if the circumstance seems to call for answering, you know, any of these four questions, is the client meeting their goals? How do we know? Do we need to adjust? Are they ready to terminate? Importantly, that may be an indication that you should consider whether evaluation or something along those lines might be the correct answer. Then we can finally move towards termination. So termination involves ending that a therapeutic or helping relationship in a planned, intentional, ethical, and supportive way. You should understand the importance of reviewing progress first, evaluation, 
reinforcing accomplishments. So thinking like, here are all the great things that you, the client, have achieved in our work together and celebrating and acknowledging that. And then also taking care of any unfinished business, you know, addressing any remaining issues or concerns, facilitating a smooth transition out of therapy, setting them up for success to handle uh, any challenges that may come their way outside of their work with the social worker. Now, ensuring client safety is paramount, so you should not ignore any red flags regarding things like abuse or neglect, suicidal or homicidal ideation, and so forth. It's difficult to give a clear-cut gold standard advice of here's exactly, you know, when you would do safety first versus some of these order of operations that I just went through. Again, it's not a math test, so it is going to depend on the question. But I will give you a helpful rule of thumb along with a few examples. And again, take this with a grain of salt, look at every question individually, uh, and use your knowledge of ethics and so forth to make an informed decision. But I do have something that I think will help give you a starting point. And it is sad Ms. Cece. So think of maybe someone you know or imagine someone named CC, Sad Miss CC, And that stands for Substance Use Disorders, Abuse, Neglect, Exploitation, Domestic Violence or Interpersonal, Intimate Partner Violence, Medical, Scope of Practice, Conflict of Interest, and Crisis slash Emergency. So just to kind of go through this a little bit in more detail, basically, you know, if your question stem or prompt does not specifically say that you as the social worker work in a substance use disorder treatment type setting, and the client has an active addiction, particularly an active withdrawal to something like alcohol that could be medically dangerous, you want to consider, again, based on the specifics of your prompt, whether it might make sense to refer out for medical supervision or specialized treatment of substance use disorders. Another might be a &E, abuse, neglect, and exploitation. So if the client reports that they've been impacted by something like this, or you have a reasonable suspicion that they're a perpetrator of this, we are required to report that. And so it might be notifying the appropriate um, authorities of that suspected abuse. Not investigating it ourselves, if that's not our prompt, if we work for some sort of child or adult welfare agency, perhaps that would be an appropriate first step. But if we're a school social worker, a hospital social worker or whatnot, usually it's going to be something along the lines of reporting and referring that. Same thing with domestic violence or IPV. So again, if in the prompt we work in that setting, then we are specialized to equip that and provide resources. But there might be something along the lines of referring to resources to shelter for safety, especially if it's in the context of couples therapy. That is contraindicated, meaning that you typically don't want to do couples therapy when there's violence involved because that could actually elevate the risk um, for the impacted partner. And then medical. So say someone's complaining about, you know, headaches and they're going through grief. They just lost a, you know, a loved one. It might be tempting to validate, right, engagement and say, oh, that's normal. You know, this is a psychosocial response and so forth, which we love validation and engagement, but we can't make a guarantee about medical things. So often we want to rule out physiological reasons before we go through an assessment or intervention for something. In a similar vein, scope of practice. We only operate within our sphere of competence. And this is kind of an ethics thing too, but something to keep in mind if the uh, question has something to do with a client seeking something that is really not appropriate to be addressed in the setting that it describes. Potentially, it would be, you know, referring to someone who has expertise in, say, you know, trauma or whatever the case may be, depending on what the client needs. And then conflict of interest, uh, where possible. So again, there can be some nuances and things that you'll have to think critically about here. But sometimes 
If there is a conflict of interest, like say the client is a family member of yours, that might be an indication that you could consider um, referring for to someone else who's more neutral and able to have that professional hat. And then sometimes crisis or emergency. So referring to say um, emergency mental health you know, response resources uh, or something like that. If there's you know a real crisis situation, um, that might be something, you know, that, you know, going to an emergency room to deal, you know, with, uh, with something, again, depending on the question, might be indicated if there's a, a real uh, emergency situation. So those are some things, sad Miss Cece, to keep in mind that is the exception to eating apple pie in every town. So remember, eat apple pie in every town, engage, assess, plan, intervene, evaluate, and terminate. Now, I encourage you to practice. You can't learn to ride a bike just by reading or listening to someone talk about riding a bike. You have to practice it yourself. So I encourage you to check out some uh, some practice exams. Maybe that's through the official ASWB practice books by Don Apgar. This is just my own personal recommendation. I'm not getting any kind of kickback or anything like that. That would be unethical. So check out my code of ethics if you're wondering about that. Um, the ASWB official exam practice practice exam is also online. You can check that out and give this a whirl and see if this is a helpful um, guidepost for you in terms of how to break down some of these questions. I did come up with some of these things myself, but I didn't make up any of the uh, guiding principles. So here are some references and I wish you the best as you eat apple pie in every town during your exam.